This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The final part of this chapter on employment income is regarding the pay as you earn system that operates on um, employment income, uh, deducting the correct amount of tax and national insurance contributions from people's salaries over the years. Now, this is probably just technical and background information rather than um, anything that you're going to find major questions on. This is much more likely to be uh, a small um, multiple choice question in section 8. It's rarely going to turn up anywhere else um, because it's background technical information. Um, employers, I'm not going to go into too much detail with it because most of it is reading and you're more than capable of reading and I don't need to sit in here and read it to you. Um, so the employer's duty, what they have to do, and again you could see this as a multiple choice kind of question, what do they have to do? So they have to deduct income tax from the pay, work out the national insurance contributions, deduct that and then keep records. Okay. They have to then give that information weekly or monthly um, electronically on the 22nd of the month under what's known as the real-time information reporting system. Um, there are penalties if you don't do it and of course that also could be a multiple choice question. Be a nasty one to try and get you to remember penalties. Um, so don't worry about it um, too much. Um, they also then need to send the, uh, the potential um, pieces of paper to the individuals who work for them at the end of the year. Okay, um, it applies to wages, salaries, overtime bonuses, pensions. Um, now, if they are doing benefits in kind, Form P11D um, is the benefit in kind uh, that we need to be aware of. Uh, now, codes. Everybody gets a pay-as-you-earn code to indicate the amount of tax-free pay that you're entitled to. Um, that's normally your personal allowance. And again, that's in the rate, so check it. Um, the rest of this information will be in the question if it turns up. Um, and that will give you a, a, a code. And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail because basically this is uh, kind of reading what you need to do. Uh, after the code there will be a letter because the number will be uh, removed um, and it'll either be an L, a K, a B, R or an N, T um, and don't, uh, don't worry about those too much um, just be aware of what they are um, there is at the end of the income tax section of lectures um, I'm going. there is a, um, a lecture about what is important in the exam, what's fairly important in the exam and what's probably not as important in the exam um, and you'll find that information um, after you've done the lectures up to the end of the income tax section. So a simple question we have here, Annabelle earns £20,000 a year, she has annual benefits of 440 and her unpaid employment income tax is £132 and she pays income tax at the basic rate. Work out her tax code. Now her tax code is her personal allowance less the benefits that she has to pay tax on less the tax underpaid of £132 grossed up which gives us 11,470. The last figure is removed and an L is then inserted afterwards. Now, what happens if there is a change of coding in the year? It's up to the employer to notify the revenue and the revenue will alter the code. If there is a, a new benefit, um, if the benefits are removed, um, all of those things that were in that pro forma 
if they alter at any time, it's the employer's uh, responsibility to let the revenue know. End of the year, a P11D must be supplied by the 6th of April. That's got your benefits on it. Um, by the end of May, they must supply a P60, a form P60, which shows your salary and the tax and NI that you've paid in the year. If you get one of those at the end of the year, check it's right. It might not necessarily be right. Um, also, they must supply by 6th of July that form P11D to the um, employee themselves. And when they leave the job, a P45. Okay, end of the chapter. If you could do practice question 16. Now, if you're unsure of any of the sections that we've dealt with, then I would pause and go back, watch it again, go through the examples, particularly the ones with the cars with the Formula One drivers, um, before you do practice question 16.